Hello Mowgli, this is the testing for your LS430 2000 to 2003 left hand drive manual harness. So you can see it's all been fully built. Everything is all labeled up for you, every single connector on there. I'm just going to quickly run to cut to what it looks like underneath because obviously you can't see anything because it's heat shrinked. So I'll be back in a second once those are done. Okay, so that's what she looks like underneath all the each ring. So let's just quickly go through everything. So we're going to do a bit of testing on the engine. So we're going to be looking at the dash lights. So that's your basically your alternator lights and your oil lights that are hooked up to the LEDs here. Obviously the oil light is on because it gets a ground and I'm taking a permanent battery 12 to it. Then we're going to go through the OBD2. So obviously you've got an OBD2 plug on the fuse box here. And we're going to use our texturing device so we can communicate with the ECU. Uh, we're going to test the fuel pump through the tech stream, make sure that works. Then we're going to start running the engine. We're going to be testing the drive-by-wire throttle. We're going to test the VVTI solenoids with the tech stream. Uh, we're going to make sure the tack is working. So we've got our little cluster here with a tack so we can see that's working. We're going to test all the injectors and coils by pulling the coils out one by one. So these aren't pushed, clipped in all the way. So we're just going to take them out one by one and we're going to hear the engine misfire as we go along. The starter will obviously be part of when we're cranking so we know that works. The ACIS or acoustic control induction system, that's this little valve over here. So obviously once we start it up, that little valve is going to close down. So we'll just make sure that, that happens. And then we'll make sure on the detection we've got no codes. So obviously we remap the ECU for a manual setup. So we've got no gearbox plugged in here at all. And then we'll get absolutely zero codes on the ECU itself. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through. You should have it in your welcome pack, but I'm just going to go a brief overview of this plug here. This is the one that you wire in. So for starters, you've got two 14 gauge red wires. Those need a permanent 12 volt supply. You've got your gray 16 gauge wire and that is for your fuel pump. So your fuel pump is controlled via the uh, relay in here. So you just connect that to the 12 volts of your fuel pump. Then on the other wires here, you've got a black with a red. That's your ignition 12 volts. So just make sure that's an ignition 12 volts and not an accessory. Otherwise the 12 volts will cut out when you go to crank. Then you've got your Black with the yellow, now that's your starter wire, so that gets supplied 12 volts. You'll see when I crank it, I'm just going to touch it on the 12 volts and it's going to start. Then you've got your pink with your blue, that's your alternator charge light, so that gives out a ground. So you see I've got the LED connected to a 12 volt source there on the other side. Uh, same thing with the yellow with the black tracer, that's your oil pressure light, so that's connected to the oil pressure switch on the engine. Then you've got your yellow with the red, that's your check engine light. So your check engine light is part of this LED in the fuse box, just in case you haven't wired that up. So you can still see the ECU is turning on and the check engine light comes on. Then your yellow is your taco feed. So that's giving out the taco signal from the ECU. So just remember the taco signal is actually a four cylinder signal. And you'll notice on here when we're idling, it'll be very, very low, even though you can hear the engine's definitely not very, very low idling. Then you've got the yellow with the green. Now that's connected to a temperature switch but it's not actually in this engine and it's not terminated yet. So you'll see here there's a wire labeled temp, okay, with a loose wire. So inside here, there's a bolt underneath the engine coolant temp sensor. You can take that bolt out, fit whatever temp sensor you want, wire it up to this, and then obviously it'll come out on the other side on the yellow and green wire. And then it should be last one here, and that is this white with a blue. Now that is the ground for the starter relay. So I've installed this so you guys can put clutch switches in. So in other words, the engine won't start unless the clutch is in. Uh, so if you don't have a clutch switch, just connect the white with the blue straight to ground and it'll do its job. So you see here, I've got it just connected to the ground of the OBD2 plug. Uh, you've also got your OBD2 plug out here. And then over here, you've got a six pin DTM plug and that is your pedal. So you can see that's your pedal going up to there. Fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to put the ignition on. You're going to see the check engine light come on, obviously in the fuse box and on the dash as well. So I'm just going to put this down because I need two hands through that, so bear with me a second. Right, fantastic. So all I've basically done is black with the red to 12 volts. We've got our check engine light in our fuse box. 
We've got our check engine light on the dash, so we know that all works. All right, we've got the alternator light coming on now, so that works, as well as the oil light, which already worked. So, we're just gonna go over to our TechStream device. I've already logged in because it takes so long and this would be like a 30 minute video waiting for it to load. But I'm just gonna go into function, system select, and it's gonna show us LS430, that's the vehicle that we're in. Go back into the engine ECU. Yeah. We're just gonna go to trouble codes, and you'll see zero trouble codes, and we'll start it up as well, and you'll see the check engine light will go up when we go through there. Okay, so it is communicating. You can see the engine temp, inlet air temp, throttle position, etc., etc. So what we're gonna do now is we've gone through the dash lights, we know they work. We've done the OBD2, we know it communicates just fine. So now we're gonna activate the fuel pump, okay? Don't get confused by fuel pump relay and fuel pump. I have a video on how fuel pump systems work on LS, um, Lexus engines. So go ahead and watch that and that'll show you what that fuel pump relay actually means. Okay, so we'll go into there. Now we do have our fuel pump in a the bucket there. So as I hit this button, hopefully you can hear it. I'm gonna come over to the relay here. As I turn it off, you're gonna hear the relay click. There you go, okay. So we're happy, the ECU is controlling the fuel pump in this case. So just remember, it's not a priming system. So again, if you watch my video on the fuel pump systems and how they work, it doesn't prime, it only runs when it gets a cranking signal or an RPM signal from the crank sensor, that's it, okay? So, I'm gonna put my ear defenders on because it's very, very, very loud. Give me a second. Right, so, as I said earlier, we're gonna start the engine up, we're gonna test the drive-by-wire by revving it. We're gonna go into the tech stream to test the VVTi solenoid, so you hear the engine change note, like da 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 on each one, so we did test each bank. We'll go over to the tack signal over here, make sure that working correctly. We'll go through all of the ejectors and unplug them one at a time to make sure that they're all working correctly and the engine misfires when we unplug them. Uh, the starter will obviously work when we crank it now, and the acoustic control induction system We'll go through at the back of the engine there, and then we'll check the diagnostics, make sure there's no codes. So again, nice and simple. We're just taking our yellow with our black, and one, two, three. Okay, so there's our pedal. drain out of fuel so I use up all the fuel in the rails so again we've got check engine light back on because it's obviously in just ignition on state okay so happy with everything there so in terms of your harness 
you'll see you've got little mounting brackets over here so it's designed to have this over there and then this clip down over there this does move forward a little bit obviously when it's in the car it'll bring this nice TP molded t-piece up a little bit you can see I've used the p-clamp over there to hold it in there and then on the other side these are designed to come up and hold against like this bolt over here so it's the second one sticking out and then this one over here obviously p clamp it onto there like that okay so again everything is labeled so you can see exactly where everything is the harness runs along down here you should have little clips in these little holes over here to hold it in so you've got your cam sensor there your tps there coming down here you're going to go through this little hole over here and then you've got your crank sensor down there you've got your oil pressure sensor over there and then this lambda sensor runs down the back here and it goes in there so we don't bring it out through here anymore we bring it out through the front so that it's nowhere near the exhaust and getting heat really really close over there if you remove the heat shields all right same thing on the other side so obviously it just makes a bit of a u shape comes along here got all your coils your injectors your cam sensors over there coolant temp your drive by wire motor oil control valves and then you come down here and then all you've got is your alternator three pin plug over there and then you've got your lambda plug over there okay obviously on your side you're going to fit your main power for your alternator over there and then the last one is coming out here you've got to your MAF sensor over there so this is the type of MAF sensor you should have with your 3UZ all right just make sure you get the correct one so that's pretty much it we've gone through all the testing of everything I'm happy with everything and yeah I'll throw some pictures on now of what it looks like obviously later on on the desk with all the heat shrink on but thanks for watching and if you guys anybody else watching has any questions please feel free to fire us a comment below or you can find us on Facebook and so on and so forth at Phoenix Engine Management. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again later. Bye-bye.